Good morning, gentlemen, and what a grand morning it is, too. We have just cause for celebration. Galloway and Phelps are sending another fiend to San Quentin. A nice showy trial, and he'll be strapped down with gas seeping into his tiny reptile brain. Now, to fresh business. Galloway and Phelps, the task is at hand. The address is on the hill, north downtown of Fremont Avenue. Skipper, is the new letter genuine? Alright guys, welcome back to, I think, the third mission of the White Shoots of the Homicide Cases. Uh, this one is called the White Shoot Slang, a White Shoe Slang that is. I don't know if this is the third or fourth mission, I've honestly lost track. But, once again we have another dead body to deal with. Let's go for it. It's raining. That's sucky. I actually like the rain. I find it very soothing myself. First the letter, and now another body. Come on, you can't keep on telling me there's not a killer still out there. You know, Phelps, all these arrests on your record are giving you a reputation. You don't want them turning into unsolved. Getting a vicious killer off the streets is more important than my reputation. Really? And besides, landing a big fat marlin is more impressive than an ocean full of minnows. The minnows make it the man, Phelps. You can't always hit home run. Sometimes you just gotta make first picks. Detectives, Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Scene secure. The rest of the patrolmen are going door to door, canvassing for witnesses. Thanks. Keep me informed. Will do, Detective. This looks awfully familiar. I think that's the impression the boys from the Examiner took with them as well. There's nothing original under the sun. Why should murder be any different? What do we have so far? Not much trace evidence to speak of. A storm blew in around 10 last night, and the rain washed most of it away. And the body? Looks like she was tipped out of an automobile from the tire tracks and superficial injuries. Strangled with a length of rope. And for my money, it's triple braid again. Time of death. From her temperature, maybe 2 a.m., but it was cold last night. Usual head injuries. Blunt force trauma. Knock him over the head, then strangle and mutilate. No message with this one. At least she was left clothed. I doubt very much he was concerned with her dignity. The green silk dress is very distinctive. Any sign of her other shoe? No. And no handbag or other personal effects. Oh, I cannot tell if she has a bush or not. <laughs> Alright, so there's really nothing to go on on the bodies clue-wise, so we'll start with the other evidence. No drag marks. Killer was moving Boot around tracks. surveying the scene. Next, we have the obvious tire tracks right here. driver and our killer are most likely one and the same. Oh, wait, do you know, oh, I forgot. There is actually something on the body that you need. Hold up. It's on her clothing, actually. The one that's actually clothed this time. Examine the head. And... Should be, there it is. Back it appears to be a dry cleaning label. Superior Laundry Services, F1363. And that is all the clues here. So we just gotta use the payphone now. Detectives, I've been working the houses across the street and up the block. This lady thinks she has something for us. Detective Phelps, LAPD. I'm Mrs. Barton, Catherine Barton. I live just across the way. Suspicious person. Did you see anyone around here last night? Suspicious. Not last night, but yesterday, early evening, I saw that awful hobo. Truth. Do you have a description? Tall, gaunt. Horribly disfigured. I think he may have had an accident in the war. He's a very scary.
scary, angry man. Any idea where we might find him? One of the hobo camps around here. He's some kind of hobo leader. They all follow him around. Thank you, ma'am. You've been a big help. Of course. Anything I can do to help. I'd hate to think that something so ghastly could happen right here and nothing be done about it. Don't worry, lady, you're too old for this. Killer doesn't like the old ones. Anyways, now we can use the phone. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, detective? I need an address on Superior Laundry Services. Just a moment. Superior Laundry Services. 1260 West 1st Street. Can you track down reports of hobo camps in the vicinity of Signal Hill? Just a moment, detective. There's a large camp under the bridge on Grand between Temple and Sunset. Thanks. So you got two options at this point, either go to the laundry place or the hobo camp. If you get to the hobo camp or you go there now, then uh, there's actually no one there. The guy that you're looking for is not there, so we have to go to the laundry service place first. You get my way. dry you cleaning on. Fine. Where are we headed? Ladies? No. Me there was no message. Where? On the Vic. The last body's had something written. On it. This one did. I'm failing to follow you. Can't be the same guy as we say. Right, before you start trying to link this to Maldonado and all the others. There are more factors to consider than the messages, Rusty. This doesn't fit your pattern, Cole. End of conversation. Understand? This guy's still drunk driving. This scene screams stereotype. <laughs> You'll see in a second what I mean. Oh, Asian guy owning a dry cleaning service. Please How please. original. You can change back into a white box. Come on. Galloway, LAPD. There We're you investigating go. a case and one of your laundry labels came up. F1363. If you give me a minute, I'll go find register and you can take a look. Might as well just break out Kimmy J right here. You take a look for yourself. I've got clothes that need pressing. You wrote the number. So open up this rent. ledger. So we're here, five one six three. Tallison. This is T. Terrellson, forty three Emerald Street, Westlake. That's all we need. Let's go visit the victim's home. Get in, you can drive. fatty. And where exactly are we going? I've got a feeling we're about to meet another wife killer. You've always got that feeling, Rusty. Yeah, and it's usually correct. Please, please, for once, can you not let your assumptions color your detective work? Just you wait. Nordic type show a particular disposition for this stuff. Aki Naki. Hello? Yes? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. Is your wife home, sir? My wife went out last night and she hasn't come home. Can you describe your wife and what she was wearing? We were out at a friend's place, Bobby Ross's, for a party. She was kind of dolled up. She had her green silk dress, open-toed white shoes. Those are her favorite shoes. Can we come in, Mr. Tarleton? I'm afraid we have some rather bad news. Do you have someone who can look after your children, Mr. Terrelson? I've been trying to arrange a sitter. Look, tell me what's happened. I'm afraid your wife was murdered last night. Her body was found this morning. There 
very sorry for your loss. I know this is a difficult time, Mr. Terrelson, but we are going to need you to answer some questions. First, we're going to take a look around. What for? You don't think it's that... It's procedure. You see to your girl. All right. Let's get going here. That sucks. Stay here till Daddy's finished talking to these men. Where's Mommy? Everything's gonna be all right, sweetheart. We would like Mommy to come home now, Daddy. All right. What's the problem, Terrelson? First serve. thing we need is the matchbook. Flip her open, get an address, Baron's Bar. You want to hear something funny, Terrelson? She's a regular. Some bums think filling out a missing persons report actually rules them out as a suspect. All right. And if I remember, there's nothing in the kitchen. And I actually completely missed one of the bedrooms here last time. So, yeah. Next we need a picture frame. Indicate that it was not a happy marriage. No, nope, not the matchbook. I already got this. Someone must be real sweet on this guy. There we go. I wonder why the picture was turned out. Alright. Notice right there for the purse on the ground. Optimistic, Cole. Oh, guess not. Oh, wait, it's not this one. It's in the laundry room. Um, ba -ba -ba. A second here. Are there more rooms? If you'd excuse me, ladies. Oh, here we go. Boots first. You can see if Pinker can match the impression of the crime scene. Size 8. Then we'll grab the purse. So she went out without her handbag? Not this. At least she was spared that particular indignity. Wanted the ID. There we go. Quite a state I don't know how display. that's a clue, but now we sure to have a name, but who cares? This is what I missed last time. The jacket. Mars was out in the rain last night. And we actually have to go outside here. Because coincidentally they own a boat. I forget which way it is. Here it is. And a boat with rope, actually. Right there. Looks like a match with the ligature marks. Right. We can do the phone call now or later. I think I'll just do it now, actually. Where's that phone? Where did the phone at, ladies? I'll be out of your way momentarily, ladies. The hell's the phone in this house? It's in the other room? Whatever, I'll do the interview now. We'll use the phone outside. Oh, there it is. Never mind. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, detective? Can you run an address for a Bobby Ross? Then send some uniforms over. Would you like him picked up? No. Suspect says he was with Ross last night. We need to confirm the alibi. Thanks for your help. All right, now we can conduct the interview. For the record, Mr. Terrelson, what is your wife's name? Teresa. Possible suspects. Do you have any idea why anyone would want to hurt your wife? No. Everyone loved Teresa. 
She was so full of life. It can't be anyone who knew her. Lie. I think you're lying, Lars. I think you were mad at your wife for embarrassing you in front of your friends. I think you came back here and strangled her and then dumped her body on the hill. You think I strangled my wife? How do you expect to prove that? Bow rope. Is there a clue here? Your wife was strangled with triple braid rope. The bow line from your boat is a perfect match. Look, I know this looks bad. I'm gonna have to come to terms with the fact that I let her go. Alibi. You said you went to a party at Bobby Ross's place? That's right, Bobby had a bunch of people over. We were having a good time. She said she was bored and decided to leave. Doubt. You let your drunk wife leave the party and go off on her own? Look, I was angry. I was having a good time. She has to go and ruin it. We always have to do what she wants to do. Last night she wanted to go dancing. Any idea where? Where she always goes. A bar down on North Beaudry Avenue. Baron's Bar. She goes there, drinks too much, gets maudlin, and calls me. I go and bring her home. State of mind. Mr. Terrelson, was Teresa happy at home? Yeah, I think she was. <laughs> Roll the eyes, doubt. Spill it, Terrelson. We like the look of you for this, so you better give us something. We're at the party. She has a few and says she wants to go out dancing. We only have the sitter until nine. I get mad. I tell her to go ahead, but I'm staying. She storms out. Look, I'm doing well at cards. I hardly ever do well. I married her because she was so much fun, but now she drives me fucking crazy. What time did she leave the party? About 8.30. Maybe a little earlier. Last one. When was the last time you saw your wife? Around 8.30. The card game at Bobby's was wrapping up. I played out my hand and drove home here. I paid the sitter and went to bed. Lie. You're lying, Lars. You didn't come straight home, did you? And how do you figure that? You can either go with the jacket or the boots here. I'm going with the jacket. You were out in the rain. You got soaked, Lars. We found your wet weather gear. Okay, I stayed a little later than I said. This cute little brunette was hitting on me. Teresa noticed. I was half cut. I walked her home from Bobby's, but nothing happened. I walked back and got the car this morning. Thanks for answering our questions, Mr. Charlton. You'll need to go downtown to identify your wet spot. I should have taken her dancing. In my experience, Mac, if you give in to broads, you'll be giving in to them your entire life. Sounds like the Terrelson broad had her last drink at Baron's Bar. We should check the place out. Yeah. Appreciate your You time. heard the man. Let's go check out the bar. Read this guy's story. Kind of rings true. Can you drive to this one? Fine. Where are we headed? Go. Last time I actually think I completely bypassed the bar to even go there. Maybe that's why I only two started the mission. <laughs> All right, let's check this guy out. Gents, drink. Oh wait, no, I did come here last Felton time. Felton Galloway, LAPD. I'm Benny Clough. Is this about Teresa Terrelson? Yes, it is. I heard about it on the radio. They're saying it was that Black Dahlia freak again? God damn it. Yeah, I rang that husband of hers. The babysitter said he was out. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. Last contact. What time did Teresa leave? Uh, around uh, 10.30, I think. Truth. On foot, in a car, by bus, how was it? She called for a cab. Did you get the number? Sure I did. I like Teresa. The only time she has a drink is when things aren't going so good at home. I was worried about her. Put out an APB on the cab. 3591. Should be traceable. That's useful. Next one, Vagrant Male. Who was she with? We've had reports about a tall, gaunt-looking hobo. He wasn't here last night? I get plenty of bums in here. 
but nothing to fit that description. He has a deep thought right now, kind of like he has a poop or something. <laughs> Look at that face. It's doubt. The likelihood is that whoever she left here with killed her. Give it up, Betty. All right, two creeps were all over. <laughs> Promising to take her dancing. Did you get a good look at these guys? Sure. I got a good look. One of them was a sailor in uniform. His cap said, uh, USS Indiana. And the other man? The other guy is Richard Bates. He's sitting in the back right now. Red polo shirt. Yellow cab. Any idea where she was headed? Uh, nope. I didn't get that. Truth. The husband said she wanted to go dancing. And she always wants to dance when she's been drinking. She was trying to talk some guys into taking her to one of the dance halls. Thank you for your help, Mr. Fluff. We'll take it from here. Hey, no problem. This is Bates. <laughs> oh my god. That's him. LAPD, don't make me chase you, shit bird. <laughs> uh, why do they always give them the opportunity? Get away. All right. Get after it. We gotta get in the car here. But you can see our car's on their side. But we can hijack this one. So no problemo. I thought you were gonna leave me there. Who knows All right, what this let's get him. I failed this lot, a couple of missions. I failed this couple of times last time I did this. Swining road's pretty crazy. It's just got a matter of just keeping up to him somewhat. And that eventually gets to open get area. Oh my god, no, come on. I don't think the killer would be back in the bar where he met the vicar. People just jump in front of the car. No, no, come on, people. Jesus. Gotta get close. Get him out. He's a truck. He's a truck, so it's pretty slow. Hit it. Clean this asshole off the world. Oh Jesus. Oh. Come on. Oh, I guess. Oh, there's no siren here. Shoot the tires. Come on. I'll try to shoot out his tires. Wish me luck. Let's go. Hit it. There you go. Got him. Nice. Let's end this farce. All right. All right. You got me. I've had enough. Hands behind your head. Okay, Bates. You're gonna answer some questions. I have a choice in this. Nope. Contact. Last night, you went drinking with a lady in the bar. Now she's dead. And your face is all messed up. I'm in the clear on that. She preferred a sailor. You could lay it off on him. Are we finished? <laughs> nope. Doubt. Do you want my partner to sap you? Tell us what we want to know. She was okay. Drunk. Pissed off at her old man, wanting to go dancing. I thought I'd ply her with a few drinks and get my end away. Looks like your salty had the same idea. Counter movement. So what happened when you left the bar? Sailor boy laid one on me. A cheap shot. After that, I don't know. Doubt. You've done time, haven't you, Richard? Is that why you ran? I'm on parole. On what offense? Sexual assault. Look, I was lying there That's on the That's a surprise. Sidewalk, <laughs> flags a cab and jumps in with the broad. We're taking you in, Bates. How come? Just for a chat. Nice private chat. I'll explain my theory of once a degenerate, always a degenerate. Take him to Central. He's a material witness in a murder case. Find him a cozy cell. Richard here knows the drill. All right, let's take this phone call. Cole Phelps, batch twelve forty seven. I need an APB out on the yellow cab, number 3591. Ask dispatch to relay all sightings to car 11K. No problem. I'll get on the radio. 
Are there any incident reports filed in the vicinity of Barron's Bar on North Beaudry Avenue? We're tracking a sailor who was involved in a fight outside the bar. I can check the reports, Detective. I have a message for you from Captain Donnelly. Message reads, James Jessup, U.S. Navy Able Seaman, has information relevant to your case. Jessup is currently being detained at Central Station. Could be our man. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. What the hell? I just got smoked by a car. I want my hat back. Where's my hat? Jeez. Alrighty. Let's get in our taxi, our back in our car right here. We should get a call about the taxi. You're behind the wheel. And where exactly are we going? Uh, let's go to Central Division. I'm hoping that the taxi will show up now. No? Huh. 